offer. Thanks. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner, by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. Um, take a roll call of attendance. Gaston. Here and uh, about to switch to another device. Okay, great, fantastic. Dylan. Here. Doug. Here. Ellie. Here. And I'm here, so we are all present. Um, okay, the next thing is public comment. Is anyone here for public comment? And this is just general public comment unrelated to anything that is on the agenda later down on the agenda. If you have general public comment, please raise your hand by pressing the hand button at the bottom of the screen. And no public comment, okay. Um, great, so we'll move on to uh, licenses, A, special short-term alcohol serving licenses. Um, the first one is SST-22-66, Michelle Kahan, Wine and Malt Hitchcock Center, October 6th, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, everybody get a chance to look at the paperwork that Steve sent along? So is anyone here from that license? I believe Casey is here, yep. Casey, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> oh, hi, great, welcome. Um, so could you um, introduce us to this? Sure, event? yeah. So um, my name's Casey Beebe. I'm the operations manager at the Hitchcock Center. Um, so we are um, doing a new fundraising event um, at our own site, which is a new and exciting thing for us. Um, and part of, so it's the, it's the, it sounds like the date was maybe wrong on that. It's October 16th, or I don't know if that was just a one was missing, but yeah, um, October 16th. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> October 16th. Um, and the model, it's going to be a catered meal. Um, it's going to be a ticketed 21 plus event um, with a fixed time of three to six on a Sunday afternoon. Um, we have several different vendors, um, local brewers. So we have White Lion Brewery, um, Black Birch Vineyards, Cars Cider House. Um, and I'm blanking on in the, on the fifth, I'll look at. Um, and so we are hoping that part of the ticket would be, um, so we'll be, um, I, don't, I don't know how many details you actually want or just the details that relate to alcohol, but I can, uh, the. Um, well, I think we're mostly interested in, um, where the sales are gonna happen on the, the, on the spot and yeah. your, uh, Kind of your your age verification yes um so we will time. have a check-in um okay. and we will card we will card everyone um mm -hmm. and they'll get bracelets um you know not that anyone could be there without a bracelet but so we'll have brace bracelets that we can quickly see um thank you um mm -hmm. so we do have a fenced garden teaching area and so the the different vendors would be throughout that fenced um, garden area. Um, mm -hmm. We would, so as people check in, they would um, get carded, they would get a bracelet, they would then move to a, the next table that would sell, sell the tickets, sort of tickets for, that they would then take to each vendor if they wanted to buy a drink. Um, and so each of the vendors, um, all are TIP certified themselves, but we will be buying the alcohol from them um which i guess was part of sort of making this this you know fit within to the you know what was allowed and what was would work um 
And um, we also have a staff person who's TIP certified, who will be sort of a, just a general, um, you know, monitor. Mm -hmm. um, so all alcohol sales would happen within that fenced area. And then, you, I don't know if people have been to our site, but we don't have, we don't really have neighbors. We're up on a hill in around, surrounded in the woods. Um, but we will have, as you can see, sort of, signage um any and that wouldn't allow people to kind of take alcohol into the driveway or into the parking lot or back onto the trail system um so it would be limited to that fenced garden area and the place where we'll be serving dinner um which was um under a tent in our yard as well as an indoor space um yeah um Okay, that sounds that sounds details you all have, yeah, <laughs> or questions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you, does anyone have any questions about this? Um, anything that any comments, concerns? No. Um, okay, is there a, a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Um, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion? Nope. Okay. Well, then let's take a vote. Um, Dylan. Aye. Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye, five to zero. Uh, the the short-term license is approved. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank uh, you. Best of luck with your event. Yeah. Hope it goes Thank well. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. So next up is hold on let me get over here are we under the umass ones or is this gabrielle's so gabrielle um not only is she at the block party now that license oh right quite ready with everything um so i think we will have to take that our next meeting which will still be before the event okay um, but uh, mr plotkin is here for his um his application okay great so sst-22-68 jeremy barker plotkin simple gifts farm a wine and malt license uh, September 17th, 10 to 5. And this is kind of the Harvest Festival, right? That's correct. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. I can hear you. Super. So how uh, how is this going to work? Let yeah, us know. So, um, this is our Harvest Festival, which is just a, a big celebration of the fall harvest and kind of the fact that we're here as a farm and, and uh, kind of available to the community. It is going to be an all ages event, um, but we'll be carding people and giving them a wristband um, <clears throat> for them to be able to buy a beer ticket. Um, so, and the, the whole area is kind of enclosed. Um, there's, there's a gate in, I, I think I gave you guys a map that shows there's kind of like a raspberry, raspberry bushes on one side, there'll be mm. a snow fence and then a stream and there's a fence on the other side. So there are gates and there's entry, but it is is an enclosed area. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna be serving food. We're gonna have craft vendors there. Um, so it'll be a and kids activities and whatnot. Um, but the, the alcohol part itself, we'll have one place where people are buying. Um, we're having um, beer from Element Brewing Company and um, cider from Car Cider and. Uh, Jonathan from Cars Cider will be serving, but he's going to be kind of acting as a independent contractor to serve both both of those products, and and will invoice us for for the cider. Um, we're buying the buying the beer, and then he'll invoice invoice us for the cider that that you know how much he sells um, at the end of it. Um, yeah, and what other what other details are you interested in? I guess. Um. I think, and did you cover the age verification? Yeah, we'll be carding people. And carding people, respect. right. Okay, yep. all right. And Wait. so Jonathan, Jonathan's TIP certified, I'm TIP certified as well. Okay, great, I think I saw that. Um, any questions, Doug? Um, just a quick one. Uh, you've had this event in the past. It, it, are you, is it pretty much the same sort of setup and operation that you did in the past? Yeah, yeah we've done it, done it, done it several times in the past. Um, right. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments, Dylan? Hey, this is uh, this is for this Saturday, correct? Ten a.m. to five. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Uh, you... 
Okay, anybody else comments? No? Um, if nothing else, then is there a motion to approve the short-term license? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Dylan. Any further discussion? If not, then we'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Gaston? Aye. Dylan? Aye. And I vote aye, uh, five to zero. The short-term license is approved. Thanks so much for coming in, and I hope the festival goes really well. Thanks. Thank you all. Okay, so next up is the bunch of licenses for you. Oh, these are in different places, UMass. So the finance Saudi Arabia. Yes, and I will. Okay. Oh, they're in several different places. Okay. I don't think I noticed when I made the agenda that the Tillis Performance Hall is just the lobby of the Fine Arts Center, so not as many places. Oh, okay. As, um, we thought, but okay. Uh, yes, All right. Bill Trispit from UMass is here, and he did um, send me along one request. Um, uh huh. There was uh, one with the he, the date was entered wrong um, on SST twenty two thirty nine. It was actually on October twelfth, not October eleventh. So. Um, okay. If the board entertains that we can change that okay hi everyone um, oh hi how are you good how are you guys all doing good how are you doing doing good thank you yeah nice to see you again so to speak yeah nice to be with in. you yeah. <laughs> so this series is for the uh fine arts center 2022-23 season um it's the concession stand that they do either in the lobby of the fine arts center or the lobby of the auditorium um they want and the goal of May 23. There's uh, 14 events at the Fine Arts Center and uh, six over at Balcar Auditorium. And at each one, there'll be snacks provided for sale in addition to the alcoholic beverages and non alcoholic beverages. And uh, there'll be you know, catering staff and catering managers on duty to monitor and uh, tip certified bartenders at each one. So, happy to answer any questions that you guys have about them or for me. Okay, thank you so much. So I think everyone got a representative sample of the licenses. Is that correct, Steve? But not all of them. Yes, yes. yes. I'm okay. happy to show any um, any of them on the uh, screen if people have particular questions. But um, I did include one example from each of the sites. They're all pretty much identical with some little variations of um, timing that should be reflected in the agenda. Okay. Um, Great. Great, thank you. Are there questions, uh, Doug? So I just confirmed that date again on, on 20 uh, SST 2239. What was the date? What it, should it have been? It should have been October 12th, Saturday, oh. October 12th. Okay, not the 11th. Okay. I and mean, uh, I'm sorry, that's Wednesday, October 12th. Okay. And then the other question, and this is more for Steve. Um, the we're not talking about the top of the campus ones at the moment. We're just talking about the other events at the at the performance spaces. Is that correct? Um, so the, these are all um, applied for by top of the campus. Um, there are some of them, I think, from 55 on, which are um, literally at the top of the campus, and the top of the campus center there. Right. Um, so so yeah. that's, the, that's the events that are related more to uh, a dinner service as part of the um, uh, student's uh, uh, degree program, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'll ask a more generic question. So you've done these in the past with us. Um, I'm presuming that the locations and sort of, you know, locations of bars, locations of, of staff controlling, et cetera, et cetera, are, this, are they pretty much the same as has been the case in the past? Absolutely, yep, yeah, exactly the same. Okay, I just, right. I, th I thought that'd be the case, but I just want to confirm. Okay, thanks, Doug. Gaston? Uh, thank you, just um, confirming that it's cash bar all around or um, without going to each each event but is that right yeah, there are cash cash bars at each uh, each event right no no tickets or hosted bars or anything like that so. okay very good all right great thanks any other questions nope um is there a motion to approve the licenses with the change of date for the one so moved Okay, great. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Dylan. Any further discussion? No? Let's take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston? Aye. Doug? Aye. 
And I vote aye, five to zero. The licenses for top of the campus was that are approved. That's SST 38, is it 38 through 64? Excellent, thank you everyone. Okay. All right, thank you so much for coming in. Appreciate it, take Good care. Good luck with, yeah, yeah, best of wishes your events. Thanks, bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Great, well, that's that. Um, okay, on to discussion items. So we did a lot of yes, Gaston. I, you know, I was thinking, I wonder if um, it's been very helpful to keep all the discussion items on the agendas in so much as we kind of make sure to not forget about them. Right. Um, but I wonder if now we've kind of gone too much to the other extreme. And I wonder if it would be helpful to actually decide which issue we want to talk about each meeting so that um, we kind of prepare for that particular topic and um, also give kind of fair notice to the public and also don't end up kind of going in depth into three issues, which would take us, you know, two hours. So I, um, I there's good reasons why we've ended up here. And I guess like, maybe this is better for the end of the meeting. I'm just raising a question about whether we want to rethink our approach to the agenda on these other items. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, um, that would be that would be fine. Do we want to talk about that now or do we want to wait until? I mean, we can just talk about it now. I mean, I don't know that we're going to get to all of them, so we might as well just. So, Steve, what did because you were kind of the ball was sort of in your court at the last meeting, and you were making a lot of corrections to these yeah, things, so, right? Um, yeah. So, so what, I, where are you with all of these? Like before we go around the room. <laughs> yeah. So, um, on the fee comparison, I did um pre present them to the uh, town finance director, and he um he sent me back a uh, a really good list of questions about um you know some some of the some more details of these types of things and numbers okay. and things like that. Um, I, I wanted to didn't have a chance to get him the all the good data um, before before the meeting, so um, I will be following up with him with that. Um, I didn't have really as much uh, as much free time the last couple of weeks as I was hoping to get the get a new versions of them all back, so I chose to focus instead on lunch carts. Okay. Um, I think with the the um, the liquor license guidelines, we're pretty much there. I really just need to to kind of finish making some of those corrections we noted and present it. Um, okay. I think with um, adult use marijuana, we're in a good place. Um, but um, I think we might want to consider kind of scaling that up as as we hear that the uh, host community agreements might might not be um, might not be enforced. So I think that'd be a little further away. Um, and I okay. think with lunch carts, our attention today, um, and if we put that on the, uh, the the real agenda, so to speak, I think that was a good good point, Gaston, mm -hmm. and as well as the um, the fee, the uh, or sorry, the license guidelines next week. I think if we do kind of one last or the next meeting, I think if we do one last round of um, comments and revisions, we'd be ready for a public hearing to adopt both of them at the first okay. meeting in October. Okay, so maybe in the future, I mean, just to kind of go through this very quickly, is that I could check in with you, Steve, and see where you're at because a lot of this does depend on on you and then we can just schedule whatever you think is going to be or whatever you've got you know you're, you're kind of caught up with does that sound good for that meeting yeah that sounds good is that good so tonight we want so we're not going to do adult use marijuana tonight we're not going to do rental we're going to do lunch cart and then license fee you said is next time yes i mean i can't yes. give an update on a rental that's what's been really taking up a lot of my time oh has it okay weeks. all right um, yeah. well let's um so let's just skip ahead to that and uh what is your update on rental um i guess it's not particularly interesting but we've just been chasing down um a lot of the uh a lot of the um the people who did not review the it department's actually been helping me we're trying to kind of now that it's been a little while a little longer than anybody would need if you know maybe they were out of town for a couple of weeks or something to renew their application um, we're trying to kind of chase down everybody. And so the IT department's been helping me with um, comparing the list of people who, um, who or, or the properties that had permits last year that don't have them this year. Um, OpenGov does actually offer pretty good tools for, um, for tracking renewals, but um, a lot of people don't renew the rental permits. They just submit new ones, um, whether it's because the properties have changed over or because, um, you know, some people just, um, you know, don't really don't really go down the right path technically, and they still manage to submit a new application, but not a renewal. Um, and so uh, we've got that list. Um, we have been sending out some letters to um, to those people, to people who submitted applications but didn't pay. And we've pretty much got everybody who was um, missing something or the other cleared up. So 
Um, we're doing that, and we're also going to be working on a big push, just kind of um, reviewing the assessor's data. Um, IT's been working with that as well. Look for all multifamily, um, all multifamily properties that don't have rental permits because they really all should. And also taking a closer look at um, single family houses where the uh, mailing address for the property is not um, the property itself is um, indicative of there maybe being a rental there. So we'd be kind of just looking into those a little bit more closely. Um, so big, big push on that at the moment. Okay, great, um, thanks. And lunch cart regs. All right, let's um, take a look at that. Yeah. So um, I did also get some some comment from Rob um, before the meeting. Um, and um, I guess starting at the top here, um, one thing he pointed out was that $20 per day for a short term license might end up being a little bit excessive for things like, um, you know, fairs or, um, or the, uh, the carnival there. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe there would be some kind of defined period of time that the short term license would be good for. Um, it says no more than three consecutive calendar days here. And perhaps um, we would just change this to just $20 for a short term license and not 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 refer to two days. Mm -hmm. People are supportive of that. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Does anybody else think that sounds good? Yeah. All right. And I did get a chance to um, speak with the uh, collectors office about parking. So, oh, great. Okay. On that as we get further down. Um, so, this was a, uh, a comment somebody made um, was, um, you know, you need to provide new photos unless there are significant changes. Um, mm -hmm. Now, this was something I thought there was um, some interesting discussion about last time was the short term license and the possibility of administrative approval. Um, some people were in favor of it for all short term events, some people were in favor. Uh, maybe only on the common or a couple other areas. And some people suggested um, only around a special event the board has pre-approved. Um, Rob was in favor. He says he's always a fan of administrative approval. It does help things move smoother, especially in kind of short time scales. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I think that would certainly make things easier, but I also understand the, the concern for, um, you know, if it's in a, a weird location or some kind of weird event or something. Um, so I kind of wanted to, Yes, Don. Yes, Don. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess I, I would um, I would be supportive of um, administrative approval for uh, the kind of approved spaces that, that are standard, or if we have kind of pre-approved some other area for an event. And what kind of pre-approval for an event? Would that be like a, uh, just something that's voted on at a, at a meeting if just ahead of time, if, there, if we know there's an event coming up? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just making something up. Let's say, um, uh, uh, do uh, Gabrielle says that they're gonna, there's gonna be an event on the South Amherst Common. And we don't, I, I don't know if we have, I don't think we have pre-approved food truck spots down there. Is that right? So in that case, we, we say that um, we're, um, we we approve of short term food trucks along the side of the South Amherst Common, and then after that, anyone can just go into the um, to do an administrative approval. Um, I mean, I, if if that seems too stringent, I I guess the question is when when do we need to weigh in um, at, at all? I don't know what what you all think. Yeah, Dylan. Um, I mean, would we want to just put in something for administrative uh, administrative approvals and somebody's denied that they can appeal and that would just come to us and then then we could make a decision on that? Yeah, I think that would be fine. Um, Doug? The thing I would say is, you know, one of the places where we as, you know, as appointed folks have <clears throat> have real sort of authority and, and I think we're, where we want to weigh in the most is is about location um you know and i think that that if we we have a, a defined set of, of approved locations you know we'll probably expand that or review that it may be just that that's really the more important question for us to 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 contend with you know sometimes you know if you think about a particular location sometimes you know there are there are potentially safety concerns or things but there are things that we as as a as a you know non-staff body think about regarding, you know, the community and that sort of thing, uh, you know, the community, you know, and, and don't want to yield that authority unnecessarily. 
at the same time, if we've, we've, we've been okay with the spot, um, you know, there's questions of safety and that sort of thing that are better suited to be answered by our police department or fire department, that kind of thing. Um, so I think it's, it's really on that. I, I think the real question as far as the yielding of, of, of administrative is, is location is the, the one thing we want to review. Um, or that we want to consider to review because because there's things that we may bring to bear that that are different than the the you know than the office would uh, and that staff would um, mm -hmm. and so I think that's the piece I think about as far as wanting us to review a little bit I, again I don't want to get in the way of of things but at the same time um, you know we've got a fairly extensive you know, process in some respects to sort of get the license in the first place and we review the cart and how it fits within spaces and that sort of thing. So I do want us to, I mean, and we don't have control over the public way. So we can't, we can't make decisions, out, you know, about the public way, nor can, I mean, that's purely outside our realm and also outside an administrative thing. So that's the other piece that has to be kind of kept in mind too, is that we're only dealing with spaces that are not governed by other bodies like the manager or the, or more importantly, the, the council. So just a, a couple of thoughts that we want to sort of balance, you know, I'm, I'm all for sort of trying to on short term licenses, try to allow as much flexibility, but I think there's times when our consideration of the location is, is important. Now, one, um, one idea I have, it's kind of a compromise, because I think you all make good points is maybe, um, maybe the administrative approval would only be allowed within, I'm, I'm just pulling up a map here. Um, within the municipal parking district, which um, would just be this town. area outlined in green here, which is really where I think the majority of kind of routine events like the fair or the, um, you know, the block party and things like that would happen. Right. And, um, you know, I, would say, I mean, if somebody wanted to do one, you know, here or something, or, you know, I think that would definitely need to go to the board, but um, yeah, I'm going to think about that. Kind of an expanded common, kind of going with that the common idea, but expanding a little bit. If I may. Yes. I'm I'm kind of okay with that because I think that's the general downtown area, which is the whole the whole purpose of the municipal district. And so I think there's an expectation that there's commercial stuff going on there. I think that's right. I think if if something were to happen, like let's say, you know, they wanted to they wanted to have a uh, an event at like the high school parking lot, you know, on the regional school property there, and and have several trucks, you know, that kind of thing. We want to review that. I think you're right. I think, you know, in and around that downtown municipal parking district, I think that that's clearly an area that's well defined, and and also I think, um, you know, sort of expectations and you know safety questions and those kind of things are ones that you know I would agree that the municipal um, uh, you know staff can 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 make that decision. So I'm, I, I think that's a, a reasonable compromise. I think when we get outside of that, we start getting into other neighborhoods or you know, the North Amherst kind of common, you know, North Amherst area, you know, because another place you might have this kind of thing would be in and around um, the uh, the Coles uh, development there. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, the North Amherst school up there in the South Amherst, you have the common, but you've also got that area around Pomeroy and, and West Street that might invite, because of parking lots are good size around some of those office complexes. Um, I think we'd want to review that a little bit. So yeah, I think that's a decent compromise. Um, great. Is that, does anyone else have a comment on that? I think that would be fine. Gaston? I'm just looking at, is there any part of this that, you know, faces a lot of neighbors? I guess even South Prospect is mostly commercial. Yeah. Um, and I, I, and I would, I guess I would think that um, town hall will be um, kind of be responsive to concerns about traffic and and things like that. So we, you guys aren't going to screw that part up, right, uh, 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 Steve? I hope not. So, yeah. um, so I, I mean, I guess you know, and and that's, I mean, the stretch behind CVS. I, I just, you know, I think that's probably not a good place. No. But. Um, um, so I guess maybe apart from like the, the leftmost line, um, it's all, it, it seems pretty good to me. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be fair um, um, not to really um, 
maybe to not include the actual boundaries themselves. I mean, the only place yeah. looking at this that I would see where it would be along yeah. North Pleasant Street here, but I think that's already defined one of the pre-selected spaces anyway. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess I guess we would say it's um, not exclusive of the boundary, but um, kind of just just within it. If I may. Okay. Yep. The other thing I would suggest is that you know if 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 uh, if we yield this to administrative decision making, the other thing is you know I think the other thing that would be important for the staff to know is like do you think it's kind of iffy that it's fine to bring it to us? That's the other thing I think mm -hmm. that's you know if it's if somebody wants to put one on like you said on South Prospect Street, you know or something like that where it's like hmm this seems a little dicey, they may not feel the authority to say no, and they could bring that to us and we could say no. Um, so I think that you know they have the ability within that in that district to to say yes, but they could also say I'm not sure. Let's take it to the full board. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, Doug. And I, I think that's imagine that's, I would imagine that's what we would do, um, unless it just you know completely doesn't meet requirements. Um, if we if we weren't comfortable with approving it, we we would just probably send it to the board instead of um, just denying them outright. Okay. Yeah, I just don't know if, I mean, you may want to phrase it with may approve, you know, in, you know instead of shall approve, you know, that kind of right. thing so that you have, yeah. you have authority to say no, but you also have authority to be like, I don't know, you know, and, and then, and then kick it to us. I mean. Yeah, I like that. All right. I've noted that down. Um, so one thing um, I just flagged here is we had talked about laying out dimensions for all of the uh, all of the spaces. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be a great project to do. Um, I think that would be very time consuming and um, I wouldn't want that to stop the, the adoption of the regulations overall. So maybe that's something we would just stick as in a in a to do list, a wish list um, at some point. Um, but it would be fantastic to have an appendix of you know the spaces, you know, kind of a zoomed in GIS view of yeah. um, the exact dimensions and everything. OK. Um, and I did add uh, somebody's comment was to petition to, to use such location during the cycle rather than only on the um, on the other locations rather than only on the renewal. Um, mm -hmm. And I spoke to Rob about the abutters notice and um, he had a lot of the same reactions as, as you did, where in some cases it would be very necessary, but it's also kind of hard to to understand how it would be practical. And he had a good idea and he kind of just threw this out out there. I don't know if it's something he uh, he, he, he was suggesting necessarily, but an idea he threw out was posting um, some kind of sign at the location for a period of time. And I actually really like that um, because the people who are most likely to to be, um, you know, bothered by the use would be, um, would be, you know, most likely to see it whether they're driving by or walking by or something. Um, and that would also avoid some of the pitfalls the abutters notice where if it's, you know, in front of a, a huge parcel, you could have people, you know, Three quarters of a mile away, getting a notice, um, who who wouldn't necessarily have any any really care about it, mm -hmm. um, and maybe if we combine that with some kind of um, provisional approval, where if there's any complaints within the first, you know, few weeks of um, of approval, it would be reviewed. Um, I think that, yeah, that would be a. I don't know. What does everybody else think? I think it sounds fine. Um, to say I, uh, would it be oh yeah go ahead Dylan sorry I uh I like I like that idea a lot more than than a butters notices I know one of the issues that we run into sometimes with the butters notices as well uh as I I learned as the planning department decided to change my road from a uh, two-way into a one-way uh a butters notices often let landlords know rather than people who actually live there know mm -hmm. so they end up you know not doing anyone any good because you know my landlord doesn't care if the, the road changes so if you tell somebody we're going to do that then you know they never come to any public meeting and then they don't like it when it happens where a sign that's something that the people who live there will see i like that idea a lot more okay yeah does anyone else have any other thoughts on this so we're just posted around the neighborhood or within a certain well, the nice thing about these, these all being on the public way is that um, it's all town owned property. So oh, we can put it up. We wouldn't okay. have to ask any, any landowners there to use their land. It would be 
you know, just post it right in the side of the road, which the town still owns. And I guess we'd have to think about design standards of, you know, how, how big we want the sign to be out of envision. It's kind of like one of those political signs. Right. Um, yeah. I guess we'd have to think about how we, how we print those, but. You could uh, have some guy laminated. walking around with a sandwich board. Yeah. No, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> So I, I think that I think the difficulty is, you know, will will it get noticed and will people pay attention to it? In, right. in some ways, it, I mean, I kind of half jokingly offer this, but it's like you know, if you have a large box that's painted and sort of sets in the space, so it gives a visual of sort of, you know, the occupation of that space for that purpose kind of thing, okay. you know, and then on the side of it, it says, oh, please contact Town Hall. Uh, you know, we're, we're considering the site for, uh, you know, uh, an allowable use, you know, for food truck or mobile food establishment use. If you have questions or concerns, call and then put the you know the Steve number, not mine. Um, well, but I think, you know, but I think that you know that if you just put a sign, you know, people are really good at not looking at signs, you know, because mm -hmm. there's just so much visual you know clutter around. But I think something that kind of gives a sense of space might also be helpful. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying we need to construct you know anything sort of terrific or anything like that. But I think you know, thinking in terms of something of that sort to sort of mark off and kind of identify. Um, a little more in, in a more pronounced way than just a sign would do kind of gives a little visual for folks as well that might prompt them to, to, to call. So just an idea. And, and the, the ad should not just be about concerns, but um, to, should it solicit um, people who are happy to well, have a yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think we want to put a, a link to the here, you know, to the to the to the meeting or the you know at least the time the date if we go back in person, but but information about the meeting so people could attend with, with positive or negative or or um, you know send feedback to my email if they'd rather not attend, um, make it easy for them. Maybe some kind of QR code or something if we can if we can get fancy, but um. yeah, I would I would suggest a generic email as opposed to your actual work email. <laughs> You yeah. just so that way, <laughs> A, it can get monitored by more than one person, but B, just so you didn't then suddenly don't get, you know, 900 emails at 1 a.m. some su Sunday morning that you really don't want. <laughs> right. <clears throat> People voting for a hot dog cart in just the right location at 1.30 a.m. on... Real access is a democracy in action, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, if people are in favor of that, I can try to um, come up with some design standards. Um, okay. I think we'd obviously want to put the cost on the applicant and the responsibility to put it on the applicant, uh, put it there on the applicant. And um, Hallie? I was just going to say, I might just like, it would be nice if we just kind of had some, some signs for the applicant because I feel like, you know, I, would, I just look at someone opening, trying to open a business here. And I think having to then produce specific signs and everything, I think it could be a deterrent to coming into town. So yeah, I don't know if we can easily have, you know, a food truck coming with the QR code scan for more details. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I could probably produce a, um, I know we can produce 11 by 17 laminated paper here. So I mean, maybe we can just try to get them to affix that to, um, I mean, we have a million of those, you know, political style signs in the back that we, yeah. <laughs> they've confiscated from uh, illegal mm -hmm. places. But I don't know if we can go around and, and use those um, for our own ends, but um, yeah, I, mean, I understand what you mean. I mean, maybe at the very least we provide, um, we provide the, yeah, laminated sheet that they can attach to both sides and, and they'll just have to find a sign to stick in the ground somewhere. I mean, we could just, have a sign that can be you know, written on with marker where the stuff you need the uh the permanent stuff like a qr code that links to where somebody can find our meetings something like that and they write there will be a write it in kind of thing if we really just want you know a sign to exist that we can we can put around the place rather than have a new one made every time with a new qr code we want to yeah go. yeah i mean i, I think we'd want to yeah, keep it as low cost as possible, and we don't really have any um any budget for for signs. I mean, we can certainly use our own, our our existing printing supplies as creatively as we as we need to. Um, it's kind of where why I was thinking that laminate eleven by seventeen, but um, we'll just raise the fee to cover the cost, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
That's true. We can always do that. <laughs> All right. Well, if we seem um, generally in in favor of that, yeah, I will. Um, I'll take those those notices um, to heart and and think of a way, or those those uh, that feedback to heart and think of a way we can do that. Um, so for the parking, I did speak to the collector and the, the finance director, and they were um, pretty open-minded about the whole thing. Um, they were pretty flexible. Um, I mean, they said that they they actually suggested, um, you know, even even letting the people you know rent um, the bags you put over the parking meters, um, which I was surprised. I guess they do that for the uh, the church downtown and the uh, the funeral home as well. They have a few kind of um, permanently on rent for for their events there, and. Um, I think, you know, I did want to present that, you know, see what you guys think about that. I mean, my, um, what I wrote here was um, they were also open to feeding the meter or, um, you know, making some kind of arrangement with them for a prepaid monthly or weekly or even yearly pass. Um, and they were kind of thinking more in the, more in the, in the, in the, um, in the state of mind of, of reserving the spot, um, which I really try to, I, I, I really lean against because I think it could just lead to some problems as we discussed before about people competing over spaces or not using them and things. Um, so I kind of came up with here as, and I also mentioned the tow vehicles, that they'd be exempt from the normal time limitations, but they must uh, pay all uh, applicable fees during enforcement hours. Uh, they can choose to feed the meter as they operate, or they can contact the collector's office for a weekly, monthly, or annual prepaid parking permit. Um, I guess we'd want daily in there too, right? Mm -hmm. Really. I really didn't want to uh, feed the meter, but um, what do you think about that? I think that'll work. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Let's see, make contact with Tom. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and, um, and with that, I kind of um, also, um, put that they would just try to maintain a minimum spacing of no more than 10 feet from the front or rear bumper of other lunch cars or other vehicles. Other vehicles. Um, I know we had the, the kind of the have to have three spaces thing, but mm -hmm. um, I think with the different sizes of different vehicles, that's kind of a good rule of thumb, especially okay. if you're at some kind of event. That makes sense. Yep. Um, I know we, we, we had a long conversation about the uh, the availability section here, how the, the licensees should strive to treat their licensees. As, and, you know, we, I know we were saying, we didn't want to really get into reserving the spaces too much, but mm -hmm. the, I, we wanted to put something in there. So, um, but respecting the other, the other licensees, this is what I came up with. Um, I think it could probably be improved, but. Um, I think that's good. Should we refer them back to the board or your office in case of massive dispute or something like that? Well, I don't really know what we can. Um, can you do anything about it? Can yeah, what we... we could do under these regulations if we're not allowing people to to reserve them, but right. Um, you know, I don't know if I don't know if we really want the board. I, I certainly don't want to be uh, adjudicating. Um, no, I guess you would. Those types but, of like, do we? Would we do that, or like, somebody takes the falafel guy's lunch cart space or sidewalk space? Do we? Yeah, Doug. The thing that's going to happen is, is that you know, if, if someone gets there first, they get there first. That's just right. you know the deal. And I think the thing is, is that what will unfortunately more likely happen is if someone's you know going to disagree vehemently with the person who got there first, mm -hmm. you know, the police are likely to get involved, uh, or any okay. of the rest of us get involved. Okay. Because I think that'll be you know it'll either be a circumstance where. Um, you know, it'll be a, a sufficient conflict that like someone else or someone in the in the conflict calls and the police come and say, all right, here's the deal. And they, you know, we just need to make sure the police know that yeah, it's a first come first serve thing. There's no guarantee. So, you know, if you get there second, you're out of luck. And if you leave and somebody jumps in while you're gone, that's also you're out of luck. Right. Um, but I think that, you know, um, I mean, well, I, I think if it becomes a thing, we'll then think about modifying our regulations. That's the other. Okay. Piece, I think. Okay, sounds good. That would probably be a good dispute for the community responders to handle too. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yes. Um, 
I did add pollution mitigation in air and electric batteries and did put in the reference to the uh, bylaws about the uh, styrofoam and single use plastic bag. That was a good suggestion. Okay, great. Um, with our discussion with this, I think this is what had been suggested last time. Um, although Rob, Rob kind of recommended against adopting this and suggested either not putting a limitation or um, just setting it, you know, kind of higher or whatever that the board thinks appropriate. But he also reminded that the uh, the nice thing about regulation as opposed to law is you can just change it with a public hearing. And if things started really getting out of hand, it probably wouldn't be something that happened overnight. It would be kind of a flow and we could just amend the regulations as they come. So I, I had put this in there. I didn't really like that very much, but I tried to um, reflect what was what was said. Um, I didn't like my formulation of it anyway, but um, what do you guys think? Yeah, Gaston? I mean, I, I would be fine putting a period after licenses and dropping everything after the colon. I, I, I mean, I, I I would be fine stopping there myself, I, I think. Yeah, that looks, that would be fine with me too. Is this Anybody the most flexibility? Else? Yeah. We we'll just want to, uh, I think, add here in section 11 that the police chief and, and his designees would be the enforcement agents of these regulations. Um, and just add the, uh, there was a great point, whoever pointed out last time that uh, the, uh, if <laughs> the, you can't really do anything to, about this to somebody who doesn't have the license, um, you can't revoke the license they don't have. So we'd add uh, just, uh, I think it, the language is already in the bylaw, but just with the non-criminal disposition and the and the, um, the fees, I think there's some kind of just boilerplate in there. So I'll, so we'll get that in there. And Okay, um, great. And that's that. That's it? Good. I think I think this is in good shape and yeah, it looks great. I think these and the um, the alcohol regs are pretty much ready for a public hearing. Okay. Great. So when do we do that? Do we need to do one more draft? Like go over this again or? I mean, if you're if you guys are comfortable with it, I can um, I can try to send along the um, completed drafts of both next week to you guys, and then okay. our next meeting would be the. Um, the 29th and um, if you're happy with them then we could just uh, notice for a public hearing and try to adopt them then okay good yeah i think that sounds good are we are we definitely we're meeting on the do, so are we, if we're meeting on the 29th then we're also meeting a week later on the 6th so to to accommodate the 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 Gabrielle's application for the oh right okay and the common would have to meet in the 29th the yeah. 29th okay yeah sure yeah that would be fine is everyone fine with that yes okay great all right so I will um I will make a note to get those out to you by next Wednesday so you have time to fully review them and and give any last feedback and um if we have any comments i can just try to send them around any last okay. comments and then um, if everybody's happy with them i'll put them in a form to um to be adopted and notice it for the next meeting super that would be great thank you so much they look really good okay so license fee comparison steve you said that is also we're going to do that next time yeah, the um, I, I I did have a little bit of a conversation with the uh, finance director about that. Okay. And, um, he had a bunch of really good questions about uh, um, you know, how many uh, licenses are issued in each of the comparison communities, and um, you know, the proportion of tax exempt housing Amherst has compared to others, and okay. um, what guidance you know there is about uh, what the liquor license fee should reflect. Um, and um, I wanted to take some time to get some good answers for him because he, he posed some good questions. So I hadn't had a chance to get back to him about that yet, but. Okay, great, thank you. And I can send those along to you, Gaston, if you have anything that you just picked up. I mean, I, I plan to do some research into that, oh, but. Uh, uh, if, sure, if, yeah, if no, uh, to offer. yeah. Sure, send it over. Let me see how I can help. 
You you didn't send it yet, right? Did, or or did no, 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 no. I had yeah, okay. No, I was just, yeah, sure. but, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm happy to take a look. I should have some time next week next week to do some more research on that. But if you had anything handy from your investigation, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. let me see the questions and see if I know anything. Definitely. Okay, and then guidelines, regulations for liquor licenses, and you said that's in process. Your process too. Yeah, I think we were pretty much in agreement with everything when we reviewed it last week. Um, right. We had a few comments, but everybody was pretty happy with it. I didn't get a chance to actually um, put it into a nice formatted uh, arrangement, but I think that that's pretty much all that remains with that before we adopt them. So, Okay, great. So um, is anyone have a question on either of those? No? Okay. So if, uh, under topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting, does anyone have anything unanticipated if not let's just do oh, a little dylan. oh sorry dylan did you know oh, I'm, I'm sorry were we going on to what we were talking about before on items good oh yeah we're going to talk about items now so the next meeting is the 29th is that right and that is we have gabrielle's license and then we're doing the lunch cart and then the lunch cart at that meeting and then uh should we space that out a little bit? And then on the sixth, do license, which one was it? Guidelines for regulations for liquor licenses. We have something ready by then. I think we could probably have the lunch cart. And if if, if we do feel, um, my plan is, is that I can probably get um, by Wednesday or Thursday to you next week, I can get the, um, like a, a semi-final draft of the, um, of the uh, liquor license guidelines and the lunch cart regs to you. And um, okay, we so can send them around just for any last comments. And um, if everybody approves, um, then we could, I think, probably hold a public hearing for both of them on the 29th. Both of them? Along so, with the Gabrielle's application and okay. whatever else comes in. Liquor license regs. All right. And then, um, so the sixth, then we do license fee comparison. Is that right? Just so that Gaston. Oh, um, yeah, when, but just, I mean, that, do, you, do you all agree with the idea of trying to um, kind of plan plan out the, the topics? Does that does it sound do good like to everybody? Yeah. yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. So all right. Yeah, I thought it was a great idea. I think that's so, good. So 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 we'll think maybe on the 6th, we'll do license fee comparison. And you said rental registration would and would follow after that. And adult use marijuana is a much longer because of what's going on with the, the community host community agreements. That would be not maybe not for a couple more weeks or a couple more. Yeah, weeks. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like to really um, focus on those. And I think that it would be good to to get these other two that are pretty much done out of the okay. way. Okay. Okay. License fee is on the sixth. Okay, great. My time has been a bit limited. One of the people I work with at the front of the counter just had a, uh, a baby boy on Monday. So we're very oh. happy for her. But oh, great. I have been yeah. running up and down a little bit more, so. I'm sure, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Doug, yeah. Just one quick thing. Uh, Alyssa Brewer sent out to, I think most of us, uh, a little thing about uh, a meeting yesterday at four. I tried to join, uh, it was on It was on a, a marijuana regulation stuff at the state level mm -hmm. and, and to progress. In part, it was about, you know, the one of the key um, discussion points relative to allowing, uh, you know, marijuana recreational and otherwise was about building equity in, in in that business area relative to the, the demographics of who's been penalized by that over the years. Um, I was not able to attend. I wasn't, I was able to get to the to the site and it was quote unquote sold out because it was it was free, and, but they had a limited number of seats. Did mm. anyone on the group get a chance to participate or see that at all? No, I didn't get a chance. Okay. No, I was just yeah. curious if anybody had it, had seen it and whether they had any uh, info on it. But if that if not Alyssa, um, you know, I wrote her back just to just to thank her, wish her well, and she replied that um that she had attended for at least part of it, and it turned out being pretty much geared towards um, applicants, and not not really municipal at all. So I don't think okay. we really missed much. Okay. All right. Okay, so great. just so do they post um, video transcripts of their meetings? Do you know, Steve? I don't know actually. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering. Yeah, Gaston. I guess a a matter that I um to to raise. I noticed um someone. Kind of with a blanket and selling a bunch of things by the Unitarian Church, and I, I guess I don't know whether is there any um, what are the is there a license for selling stuff in town or not? 
my concern was this. Um, I mean, I think it's actually, I think it, I see it as a positive, um, uh, but it, I, I guess I wouldn't want to have people get harassed um, by the police. And so I don't know if we have or want to have a license, um, but as I was kind of contemplating it, it, it occurred to me that if we did want to have a license, that in effect, we could have the, uh, the you know, the, the police can be prepared to uh, give the license on the spot instead of harassing them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. So I, I don't know if anyone, what, what's the background on, on people just setting up to sell stuff in town? What are the rules and any background on that? We do have a we do have a document about that. It's 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 kind of actually surprisingly unregulated. I think compared to some of the other things we do, um, it's under the hawkers and pedos regulations. I will try mm -hmm. to pull them up really quickly. Okay. And that's something they they can just come in and get at the office, right? They don't really need to. They need to provide us with a I think a their license at some point, but they don't ever have to actually get they their state hawkers and peddlers license. Oh state to, um, license, okay. But they don't have to um get a a um a, a license or anything, which kind of surprised me. But and there's no restrictions on their use of the public way. No, not really. I mean a little bit they have to That's they leave the sidewalk clear, I think. I'm trying to pull up here. I have them. So the Hawkers and Pedro's license both covers kind of door-to-door -door, or really any traveling salesman, including door-to-door -door and, um, and things like that. Um, I guess not heating oil dealers, but um, okay, there's some, it's one, you can tell it's one of these weird, really old laws where they uh, cannot sell um, small artificial flowers and miniature flags and things like this. So, so this is all state law of this part. And then there are, Amherst regulations here. So this is really the only thing that that's controlling with that type of activity. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I take it that if um, if there were complaints or, or an officer is walking down and, and asks, um, you know, engages the seller, the hawker, the question is, do you have the state license? Is that the idea? I don't know if the, um, if they really ever do interact with those people, but I guess that would be the question. Yeah, they don't okay. really need any, any document yeah. from the town of Amherst. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to create an issue where there isn't one. I was just, so I'm glad we reviewed this. Thank you. Okay, any other topics, unanticipated topics? No, okay. A uh, review of minutes, we don't have, we, there weren't minutes, right? No. Okay, our next meeting is the 29th, where we will be approving Gabrielle's license and hopefully lunch carts and the liquor license regulations. That would be exciting. Um, is there anything else? No? Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Dylan. Um, take a vote out of here. Uh, Dylan. Aye. Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. Five to zero. We're adjourned at 5.59 p.m. And thanks, everybody. See you on the 29th. Dylan. Or at the block party. Or the oh, yeah. The block <laughs> party. <laughs> uh, my kids don't want parents yeah. around for that. So. Um, yeah. So piss them off. Yeah. No embarrassing. <laughs> no embarrassing. I'll be there around seven ish. If any of you guys are there, I'd love to see you out. Okay. Cool. How late does that go? I think nine. nine. Oh, really? Well, nine. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Well, see you later. Bye.